Okay, welcome back to the series on creating GUIs in Java. Um, so there's a few things that we want to do uh, with our uh, <clears throat> with our GUIs at this point. Um, I've got a little cleanup items to take care of. Uh, maybe we want to add a little title up to the top. But we also uh, want to learn how to pass information from one scene to another scene. So right now, if I go from scene to scene, and I go back, um, I can't actually pass any information back and forth right now. So this is where we left off. We built this table view um, object. But maybe what I want is I want to be able to select, I don't know, Rebecca Ferguson here and say, you know, view uh, or detailed view or something like that, where it would give me more information about, uh, about our user. It would take us to a different scene. So that's really the focus of this video is to, uh, is to give us the ability to pass data from one scene to another scene. So let's get started. Uh, in order to do that, let's go into Scene Builder. Actually, let's let's first create another scene to go to. So I'm going to right click here in my GUI demo and I'm going to say New Empty FXML and let's call it the Person View. And we'll use the Java controller and finish. So here's our, our empty FXML file and our person view controller. Let's make it a little bit bigger for you. There we go. Okay. So let's go into Scene Builder and build a really simple. Oh, there's our person class. Sorry, we don't need that. Um, let's go into the person view. So we'll make it the same size as our other screens. Go to layout. I believe we were 800 by 600. And on here, we'll just do something really basic. Uh, let's put in a grid pane and we'll put some labels on it. I'm just copying and pasting these labels everywhere. Um, add row below. Okay, this one's going to be the first name, last name, birthday. So this is sort of the same information available in the uh, table view, uh, but we also have the ability to uh, figure out their age based on their birthday. So we'll put that in. And we'll add a button to go back. So the back button. Hit save. Actually, let's make each of these just a little bit bigger so they're more interesting. Okay, so the font's just a little bit bigger. And we can put a little bit, we'll put a label up here in the middle. And we'll say this is a detailed person view. Make it massive. There we go. Move our grid down here. Actually, what, why don't we make these things, uh, put these two things into a V box here?
<coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> my oh my. All right. And then uh, we can make this a little narrower. And then within our VBox, we can make everything centered and put some spacing between the items. Maybe a bit more. There we go. Now we're good. Okay. Hit save. And then <clears throat> the other thing we need to do is we need to adjust our. Uh, Table view, you're going to need to add a button to this. So here, you can add a button. And let's call it uh, uh, detailed person view. Hit save. So now we've got the GUIs. What we have to do is we have to uh, hook up these new scenes um, <clears throat> to handle it. So first things first, let's look at our person view controller. Now we need to receive a person object, right? The, the person that's been selected from the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say private person, and I'm going to call it the selected person. So I'll have an instance variable that can um, hold a person object. And I'm going to create a special method called uh, init data. So public void init data, and it will receive a person. Okay, so this is, I'll just say uh, this method accepts a person to initialize. Initialize. <laughs> I'm having trouble spelling and typing the view. So here um, we're going to need to label each of these: the first name, last name, birthday, and age, so we can refer to them. So I'm going to say at fxml private label first name. Make it first name label. So we have the last name, the birthday, and the age. So if I pass in a person object, right? The first thing I'll do is I'll make them the selected person. So I'll say selected person equals the person that was passed in. And then I can update all of these labels with their information. So I can say first name label, set the text to be the selected person. And I can say get their first name. I can do the same thing with their last name. And their birthday. Now the birthday is going to be a little bit different because the, uh, the birthday returns a local date object, right? So I can say uh, uh, get birthday and then I'll say Make that a string. And then the age label, set the text to be the selected person, get their age. Oh, do we not have that method? Well, we'll have to create it. Okay, we don't have a method called get age. So, <clears throat> but we want the person that's passed in, we want to know their age. So we can go to the, um, let's go to our person class. And in here, let's create a method called getAge. 
So we'll say public int get age. Right? So this is what this is where you start thinking about like objects. Um, so a person should know how old they are, right? So you can ask a person their age. So here I'm just gonna say return period between birthday local date dot now get the years okay so what this does is given the person's birthday and whatever the current date is right so it always it always looks at the current date tell me how many years are between so now we go back to our controller here save this returns an integer, so we have to convert that integer into a string. So uh, there's a few different ways of doing it. Um, we can just do integer dot parse int. Sorry, parse. To string. There we go. We don't need to parse it. We need to convert it. So Basically, have the person return their age, then turn their age into a string, and then set the label accordingly. Hit save. Now in Scene Builder, I have to, uh, actually I don't have to do anything in Scene Builder because we've already hooked up these labels. So that's, that's that. All right, now let's go into um, our uh, table view controller. So now here, in table view, we have to create a new method that will allow us to change over to. Uh, so before we had the change scene button pushed. Okay. Now in this case, we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing. We're going to break it out a little bit more. So I'm going to copy this, paste it here. And I'll say when uh, this method is called, it will pass a person object, pass the selected person, selected person object to the detailed uh, view. And so here, let's call this uh, change scene to uh, detailed person view. Okay, so here, <clears throat> where it's going to be different is we're still going to we're still going to uh, use a parent, but I'm going to actually set up <clears throat> this loader as something that we can refer to more than once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say fxml loader loader equals new fxml loader and now that it's an object I can say loader set location whoops set location and the location is going to be the same as this this is what's this is a, a long way of writing the same thing out here. And then <clears throat> what I can do is I'll say loader dot load. Okay. So these three lines are equivalent to this one line here. But there's a reason that I did it. And <clears throat> although this breaks it out a little bit more than uh, we're used to seeing, what this allows us to do is Oh, we need to update our documents. So this one's called the person view. Okay. Um, <clears throat> after we've set uh, uh, the scene, right? So we've created the scene. Now we can we can access the controller and call a method. So I can say person view controller. Okay, so remember that's this class here, person view controller. And I'll just call this the controller equals loader dot get 
controller. So <clears throat> what this does is because the this FXML loader, we've we've set it to be looking at this file. Now I can get the controller for that file, right? So it will look in this file, find out where the name of my controller is, and pass it back into this variable called controller. And now I can use that. I can, I can say to the controller, remember we created a method called initialize data. And <clears throat> it passes in a person. So we say init data person. Now the thing is, in order for this to work, we need to have a person selected in a table. So we're going to say table view. And then we could say get selection model. And then we can say get selected item. So what that does is it will return a person object. Okay, so our table returns a person. We pass that person to this method called init data, which is in our person view controller. And that's how we get data in. So let's uh, save, go into scene builder here and hook up our button. Detailed person view. Ooh. So I've got a detailed person view. So on action, I want to change scenes to the detailed person view. Hit save. All right, let's hit the run button here. Go to table view, select Rebecca, click on the detailed person view. Oh, and it blows up. So what's going wrong here? So we got a null pointer exception in init data person view controller line 30. So <clears throat> when we uh, tried to set the text for first name label, we got a null pointer exception. So you, there's a couple of reasons you can get those. What it means is we've defined this first name label, but we haven't necessarily initialized it. So it's currently null. So let's go into scene builder here. If I click on my label, look at my code. Ah, yes, I have not set these. So we have to set them up. First name label, last name label, birthday, and lastly, the age. And hit save. So because I hadn't uh, connected these up in our in our view, um, when the controller tried to refer to it, it was getting null. So close that. Let's try it again. Go to table view, select Rebecca, detailed person view, and it pulls us in uh, to our detailed person view. So you can see we're in a different scene here. We've passed in the, the, the object of Rebecca Ferguson, and um, that person object was able to calculate the age of 30 years. Now, if we click back, it doesn't do anything yet because we haven't created that method yet. So we'll close that. And in our person view controller now, what we need to do is very similar to this. We need to, uh, just gonna copy this exactly here and here to go back to the table view I'm going to call this example of table view put fxml hit save try running it oh I haven't hooked it up yet so this won't work so let's go into, click on my back button, change screen button was pushed, file save, I'm not passing any information back.
try Mr. T this time, detailed person view, it works. I hit the back button and it comes back. So there you have it. Very easy to set up uh, um, objects uh, to pass information into different scenes. Hope you enjoyed the, uh, the video. I am going to upload it to GitHub and you can always access my code from there.